Welcome back. You're watching Power Talks with Santosh Sir. Your Excellency, President Bill Clinton is one of the most famous or renowned presidents of the United States ever. You had the opportunity to work as Chief of Staff in the Special Envoy of the UN in Indonesia in 2005, which was led, led by former President Bill Clinton. How was the experience like working with him? That was fantastic. Yeah, I had two years with him. He, he agreed. Uh, Kofi Annan asked him whether he would lead the international effort to respond to the tsunami because it was such a massive challenge and it spread across so many countries. And, uh, and President Clinton agreed he would do it for two years. So we, we set up an office to support him in that capacity in New York, actually, not in, not in Indonesia. We covered the whole Indian Ocean from there. It was a great experience. It really, uh, he's an amazing, an amazing person, the most natural politician, someone who's just so genuinely interested in people um, that it was quite, it was very inspiring, uh, obviously, to, to see how he operated and to, to get a chance to get to know him a little, yeah. You're an expert on recovery of natural disasters and conflict. Just last year, in August, we had a very sad incident in Nepal. We had the Kosi flood that displaced about 70,000 people in Nepal and a few million in, in India. Mm. Now, with your experience of dealing with tsunami relief, working with President Bill Clinton, where do we find your expertise useful or, and the UN involvement in the recovery of Kosi flood victims? Well, I have a number of jobs in Nepal. One of them is as the humanitarian coordinator for the UN system. Uh, so when it comes to the emergency response on the international side, uh, not only UN, but a number of the big non-government organizations like Save the Children and working with the Red Cross, my role is to make sure that we respond very quickly as a team. So we did that in Koshi, I think, uh, between the World Food Program and the uh, UNICEF and others, we, we, we did respond very quickly in support of the government systems because the government also moved very quickly, I feel, and did a, a pretty good job. My role in addition to that is, to, is, is really to look at how we could have avoided the casualties and how to help the government start to shift not only into an emergency response mode, which it does now, but to also think much more proactively about how to reduce every year the number of casualties. Because this problem could arise next year as well it, with the monsoon coming, coming up. A thousand Nepalis on average die every year from a natural disaster. The Koshi was an absolute, I mean, an example of, of a disaster that did not need to happen. And it was a man-made uh, crisis, not an act of God. Uh, but there are many, uh, many like it, not nearly as visible as Koshi, which displaced you know, three million. I worked on some of the places I... Bingo! Welcome back. You're watching Power Talks with Santosa. Your Excellency, uh, when it comes to the UN's role in Nepal's development, its peace process, sometimes we are confused because we have UNMIN, which is probably the predominant uh, UN agency in Nepal right now, and we have the UN and its several agencies, and then we also have OHCHR. Can you please explain us the, the differences and the specifications of this, the UN agencies? Well, we're, we're a big group. I mean, I like to say all of the UN's assets are deployed in Nepal, at Nepal's request, obviously. It's political and security assets, and that's, of course, UNMIN. Uh, it's, it's human rights team with OHCHR, the whole development and all the humanitarian actors of the UN are pretty much present in Nepal. UNMIN, as you say, is, 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 is the most important presence of the UN today because of the very important historical peace process that Nepal is in the middle of. It's come with a Security Council mandate. It has a very specific mission. My part of the UN, which is the development and the humanitarian uh, part of the, of, of the UN, um, is not a political mission as such. Uh, but rather, it is very much all about the peace. Our mandate and our work is, is very much organized around supporting Nepal's peace process. But our function, if you will, is to make sure that the root causes of the conflict are addressed. For that reason, our presence is a much longer term one. We've been here for almost 60 years. We may be here another 50 or whatever, uh, as long as Nepal wants us to be around. Uh, but our function now is to really look at whether the underlying causes of the conflict are being addressed and, if, and, 
and therefore the peace process, is it going to stick or not? Uh, and we support the government, the people of Nepal, in making sure that happens. Obviously, the Office of the Human Rights, uh, Office of the High Commissioner of Human Rights, has another. Uh, it's ag very much a part of that uh, team, in fact, because the underlying issues, the long-term issues about human rights, about impunity, are issues that are going to take a generation to really address properly. So it's going to take a longer while. It's the the human rights issues because the human rights issues are yeah I think uh, um, the issues of impunity when you start to unpack the issues that are in fact laid out in the comprehensive peace agreement oh, this is not a UN agenda but when you look at the CPA and the issues that uh, the kind of Nepal that the parties to the CPA are, want to build issues to do with you know addressing this culture of impunity establishing human rights um, uh, on a much firmer footing, should we say. Um, these are things that are, when you unpack them, it's about rule of law, it's about the effectiveness of the police, it's about the effectiveness of the judicial system, uh, it's about uh, the status of women, not only uh, in parliament, but in the home even, and the extent to which they have uh, property that in their name. Um, uh, these are all, I mean, enormously complex and long-term issues. They're economic, they're social, they're cultural issues that are going to be tough to deal with. So 